Hi, I'm Colin G. West. Some science facts are so cool that once you learn them, you can't unthink them. Next time you feel a raindrop, I bet you're going to think about this. Pretty terrible weather here, right? Would you believe me if I told you it's not actually raining outside? Only one way to find out. Let's go take a look. Okay, so you're right. In a very real sense, it definitely is raining out here. But still, I promise, the science of this is a little more complicated than it might seem. The thing is, it's definitely raining in the sense of liquid water hitting the ground. And me. But is it raining in the sense of liquid water falling from the clouds? That's actually a harder question. To figure this out, we have to go back to the basics. A cloud is just a bunch of little tiny water droplets floating through the air. It's the same as when you exhale on a cold day and you can see the moisture in your breath. What do you think about all this, Phoebes? Phoebes seems a little bit confused. And I don't blame her. After all, if clouds are made of water droplets and water is heavier than air, then why isn't it raining all the time? Why aren't the droplets constantly falling from the clouds? The key is that I wasn't kidding earlier when I said that clouds are made of little, tiny water droplets. Most of them less than the width of a human hair. So these droplets are so light that the wind and air resistance keep them gliding through the air instead of falling to the ground. Basically, a cloud is like a billion little flying squirrels, except the flying squirrels are made of water. Okay, but if the water droplets are too light to fall to the ground, then how do we ever get rain? After all, something is soaking my neighborhood right now. For a long time, scientists thought the answer was something like this. As the little droplets swirl around in the cloud, they occasionally run into each other. And if you've ever watched two raindrops collide on a window pane, you know that when they run into each other, they stick together and form a bigger water droplet. So the theory was that if a cloud got crowded enough with water droplets, they'd keep running into each other and combining until they became big enough and heavy enough to fall to the ground. This explanation is called the collision and coalescence process of rain formation. It's definitely something that really does happen in rain clouds, but it turns out that in many situations, the droplets just don't collide often enough to explain all the rainfall. Most of the time, collision and coalescence isn't the primary cause of rainstorms. That honor goes to something called the Bergeron process, named after a Swedish weather scientist named Tor Bergeron. Bergeron knew that high up in the atmosphere, where many clouds hang out, the temperatures are much lower than they are here down by the ground. This means that many of the water droplets in a cloud are actually ice crystals. Then one day in 1922, Bergeron was out for a winter walk looking at snowflakes when it occurred to him it's much easier for water droplets to freeze onto a nearby ice crystal than it is for an ice crystal to evaporate back into water droplets. This means that when you get a cloud with a few ice crystals surrounded by lots of cold water droplets, the water droplets will all slowly feed the ice crystal until it grows bigger and heavier and eventually it just falls out of the sky. Okay, but here's the fun part. These ice crystals could only form because the clouds were up high in the cold. As they fall down into warmer temperatures, they melt, turning into droplets that splatter the pavement on a rainy day. So while you and I see liquid water hitting the ground, they actually left the clouds in the form of frozen ice crystals, or as they're more commonly called, snowflakes. Amazingly, this can be true even on a relatively warm spring day, especially if you live in the cooler regions outside the tropics, like the United States or Europe. What looks to you like a pleasant April shower probably began life miles above you as an April snowstorm. It just melted before you had a chance to break out your ski boots. So okay, technically, meteorologically speaking, rain is rain if it hits the ground as a liquid. But it's still pretty cool to know that if you feel a raindrop, it means that somewhere, miles above you, there is probably a snowstorm trying to happen that just couldn't keep itself together all the way down. Of course, if you're a student, good luck trying to convince your superintendent that this kind of thing should count as a snow day. But hey, give it a shot. At least you've got a little bit of science on your side. So, that's it for this week. If you enjoyed the show, subscribe to the channel for more science thoughts you can't unthink. And click the like button if you enjoyed this episode. If there's a part of your day you'd like to spice up with some more science, tweet it at me with the hashtag, what should I think about when? You can find me on Twitter at at Colin G. West, because I am Colin G. West. Thanks for watching. Stay dry.
Peeps looks a little bit confused, and you might be too. After all, if clouds are just made up of droplets of water... <laughs> No, can't do it. She's more comfortable now. Yeah, yeah.